Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing Meta AI's new project, which is called Lima, and it stands for Less is More for Alignment. Now, this is quite groundbreaking, and this is something that I'm going to be showcasing as it's quite innovative in the term of how they are able to train its language model. Now, what they've done is that they presented a detailed analysis of language model with Lima, and this is specifically focusing on large scale models. These models typically undergo two stages of training. Firstly is the unsupervised pre-training, and secondly is the fine tuning with reinforcement learning or better align them with specific tasks and user preferences. Now, what the authors have done of for this actual paper is to aim to determine the relative importance of these two stages by training a 65 billion parameter language model which is called lima and this is something that is going to be released very shortly and this is through meta ai now lima is actually fine-tuned for only using a thousand carefully selected prompts and responses and this is something that we haven't seen as it's something that has been trained without any reinforcement learning or human preferences in terms of its modeling now if you compare this to other types of models you aren't able to see this type of approach in terms of its training sets and this is why i really wanted to show showcase this project as it's quite remarkable in the terms of how it, it was able to actually innovate its model and its data set and this is something that we're going to be like taking a look in today's video as we're going to go over certain things about what lima is as well as how it's able to achieve this so with that thought guys before we actually get into the video i just want to put it some emphasis on my dono page i just want to say thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart i've really 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 appreciate it and like for the support you guys have been giving me and the love it really means so much to me and i promise you that i'm going to continuously work hard to make sure that you guys are able to get the best content and the best value so i've really really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart um i promise you guys i'm going to keep working my hardest to make sure that you guys are able to benefit from this channel now if you guys haven't followed this twitter page please do so as i'm going to be posting the latest content over here so that you can get the latest news on the ai world and if you guys aren't subscribed please do so like this video as it will definitely help the algorithm out and if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos i would highly recommend that you do so as there's a lot of content that you'll definitely benefit from and with that thought let's get right into the video so guys as i talked about Lima was fine-tuned to only use a thousand carefully selected prompts. Now, the model is not actually provided with explicit instruction, but it's trained with the standard supervised loss. Now, surprisingly, Lima demonstrates strong performances showcasing that its ability to understand and follow specific response formats using only a handful of examples from its training data, which is quite remarkable as it only has a thousand specifically selected like prompts and responses and it's able to do such a wide variety of different things with its data set now the training prompts cover a wide range of different tasks including planning trip itineraries and speculating about like alternative history and these are some of the examples of what you can actually do with this training data set and it just basically demonstrates that the model is quite versatile in terms of its uh like responses as well as how it's able to depict different types of generation and it basically shows that it exhibits a good generalization in terms of its capabilities and performs well on unseen tasks that are not present in the actual training data now what they've actually done to evaluate lima's performance is by taking a controlled human study that was actually conducted and what the study had done is that it showed that the responses that were generated from Lima were with those compared to GPT-4, Bard, and DaVinci showed that the actual results of Lima were quite like in some cases they were actually equivalent but some on the other cases they were actually preferred over GPT-4 and actually the comparison with GPT-4 it got 43% of its cases to be preferred over. Now when it was compared in, to Bard the actual percentage was increased to 58% and this percentage basically refers to the preference over BARD when comparing it to Lima and it actually received a 65% increase when it was compared to Da Vinci and it basically shows that it's able to be on par with these models but in certain cases it's actually even preferred over these models. 
Now, based off these findings, what the authors of this actual project were able to find and suggest is that on the vast majority of the knowledge and language models it was able to acquire during the unsupervised pre-training stage, what it found was that the fine tuning with the limited amount of instruction data is actually sufficient to teach the model to produce high quality outputs and it shows that it's able to work on unseen tasks that are not actually present in the training data which highlights the importance of pre-training in enabling model to learn general purposes which represents and performs well across various different tasks now this is quite remarkable as what they've been able to do and i just want to say it's a huge props to meta as well as the researchers of this project to what they've been able to do and accomplish i want to take a look at this actual table over here as in this paper it provides a breakdown of the sources of the training prompts we see these are some of the inputs of the training prompts that was used to create the data sets as well as the test prompts that were used in the study now the total training data consists of approximately 75 or 750k tokens and it was just distributed across a thousand sequences now what the table actually provides is a summary of the data that was used to train the language model lima and it also includes where it was specifically explored and split in terms of its tokenization and where it was distributed across the thousand sequences now the authors actually described the data collection process from three different community question and answer websites. We can see that in the actual table over here, it focused on Stack Exchange, WikiHow, as well as PushShift, which utilized Reddit data sets. Now I'm going to be explaining a little bit more of what these different types of data collection sites are. Now. The data collected from Stack Exchange as well as WikiHow was found to be more of a well aligned with the actual desired behavior of a helpful AI agent. Now, these websites typically provide informative and helpful answers to user questions. Now, as a result of this, what the researchers were actually able to do is that they were able to mine the data automatically from these sources, meaning that they are able to extract the prompts and responses without much manual intervention. Now, on the other hand, you have PushShift Reddit dataset, and it contains highly upvoted answers from Reddit, which are often characterized for its humor, obviously, or if it's something like that is uprising in the Reddit threads, you're going to see a lot of upvotes for it. Now, these types of responses do not actually align well with the desired behavior of a helpful AI bot. So as a result, what they've done is that they curated their appropriate responses from the data set, which required a more manual approach in selection to be added to its data set. And this is one of the things that they talked about in terms of its community question answering as, as to show you how they were able to collect their data set. Let's focus on the next step and how they were able to actually, able to actually train Lima. Now to train Lima, what the researchers were able to do is they were able to specifically follow a protocol and they begin with Llama 65 billion model. And what they've done is that they performed the fine tuning using their alignment training set, which only consisted of a thousand examples. Now, in order to distinguish between the different speakers, such as a user as well as an AI assistant, what they were able to do is that they created a special token called the end to turn token. And this token was placed at the end of each utterance in the training data. Now, while serving a similar purpose as an end of a sequence type of token, which used an indication of an end of a text generation. What the EOT token was actually able to do is it was specifically able to introduce to avoid any confusion or overlap when the existing meaning of EOS token was actually used in the pre-training model. Now, by introducing this new EOT token, what the researchers were able to ensure is that Lima could differentiate between the user as well as the assistant or the utterance during the training. And what this was able to do is that it facilitated more of an alignment and learning process when it was trying to train Lima. And obviously, this was actually able to allow, allow the actual model to understand and respond appropriately to different types of responses and prompts effectively and efficiently. In this figure of the paper, it presents the results of human preferences in terms of its evaluation, and it compared the performance of Lima with five different baselines. 
Now, this evaluation was conducted with 300 test prompts, which you can see over here. And the purpose of this evaluation was to assess how well Lima performed in comparison to these different types of baselines such as GPT-4, Claude, and etc. Now, the participants in the evaluation were presented with a test prompt as well as a response generated by Lima and the baselines. Now, these were actually... The, like the baselines were able to be asked to indicate their preferences for a certain response and they were able to compare what was able to perform and generate a better response and the figure is showing that it provides a visual representation of the evaluations responses which showcases the percentage in, of cases in which the responses from lima were equivalent or actually preferred over these different types of baselines now, the observation from the actual study indicates that despite training significantly more data, which is actually 52 times more data, the Alpaca 65 billion uh, parameter model tends to generate less preferable outputs compared to Lima. And similarly, the Vinci, which is trained more on a superior reinforcement learning from human feedback method, has been also able to perform or produce less of a preferable output from Lima. And this is quite remarkable as Limos has been able to give you better responses compared to these amazing different types of models. Now, obviously, in contrast, you can try to like put it up par, up par with uh, GPT-4 as well as BARD, but it's also able to hit certain alignments as well as certain like preferable outputs in comparison with these different models, which shows that it's slowly but surely getting to the same part with these different big models. Now, in the paper, the authors conducted different experiments to explore the impact of data diversity, quality, and quantity on alignment processes. They investigated the question of why less is more in terms of training language models. Now, through these experiments, the researchers observed that when it comes to alignment, scaling up the diversity of training data has a significant effect. They find that increasing the diversity of training prompts rather than simply increasing the quantity of data plays a crucial role in terms of improving alignment processing. Now, furthermore, they also examined the effects of data quality in the alignment process. Now, while they were do not like they don't actually provide specific details on their finding but they were able to see that the data of higher quality like tends to be more better in terms of its alignment results and this is something that you can see on the research paper and get a better idea of later on if you go on to check this out and overall i just wanted to showcase this amazing project as something amazing and innovative as to what meta has been able to accomplish in terms of training its model and the analysis presented of this paper emphasizes that there's effectiveness of unsupervised pre-training in language models and that's quite innovative in the way it is training different types of models and we're definitely going to see more out of this later on in the video or not the video but in the future and i'm definitely going to be showcasing more different things about Lima in the future as it tends to evolve and innovate its different models. And with that thought, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video quite informative. I'm definitely going to be posting more videos and going over different types of research papers so we can get a better idea of these different models. So with that thought, guys, make sure you give this Twitter account a follow so you stay updated. And if you guys haven't subscribed, please do so as you will definitely benefit from it. And if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos, definitely do so. Like this video and I'll definitely see you guys next time. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, fellas.